What if I told you that you could be a grand champion ranked Rocket League player, solely based on your positioning and rotation? Well, it's possible, and today, I'm going to show you how. Okay, okay, in all seriousness, that promise is pretty bold. But my point still stands. If you watch this video all the way through, you will become better at Rocket League. But what do I know? Well, if you're new to the channel, my name's Spook Luke, and I'm a 1600 rated Grand Champion Rocket League coach. I work with players on my Discord from the middle ranks all the way up to the highest levels of play to help people get better and rank up fast. But enough about me, it's time for you to improve. So without any further wait, here is everything you need to know about how to rotate in Rocket League. Alright guys, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to split this topic up into two videos, defensive rotations and offensive rotations. I'm going to cover defensive rotations first in this one because I think they're a little more easy to pick up and because defense wins games. But before any of that, there's one thing you must understand for any of this to make sense, and that is the concept of ranges in Rocket League. Okay, so a player's range is basically the space around their car that they could cover at any given time. Shout out to Verge for this clip here that illustrates ranges real nicely. What you should notice is that ranges are like a semicircle in front of your car, and they vary based on how quick you are moving. So if you boost and are moving faster, the range in front of your car expands, but the range behind you shrinks because it's harder for you to get the ball behind you when you're going fast, but it's easier to get that ball ahead of you. Another thing about ranges is they vary based on your rank. So if you're rated higher, players probably have the ability to cover larger areas around their car, and you should expect that as you move up in the ranks, people's ranges will expand. For the sake of demonstration, I will be using Grand Champion ranges for this video, but when you transfer this stuff over to your games, adjust the ranges to your skill level. Now that you understand ranges, let's talk about rotations. Put simply, a good rotation is one that maximizes the amount of space covered by your team. So let's do a quick test. Which team is currently rotating better, blue or orange? If you said blue, you're right. Remember, a good rotation is one that covers the most space. And what controls how much space you cover? Your range. So in this image, it's clear to see that the blue team is covering much more of the field than the orange team. Because the orange team's ranges are completely overlapping, this is a bad rotation. All right, feeling good? Now that you know the basics, let's talk about rotating on defense. Okay, rotating on defense can be largely broken down into three roles. Let's take a look at this example and break down each role. When the ball gets sent into your zone in threes, the player closest to the ball is called the first man, and they are the first to respond. The first man's job is to fight for possession and try to send the ball out of your zone or develop a counterattack. This guy's job is pretty straightforward, so I won't spend too much time on it. The player rotating behind the first man, though, is usually where you find problems. This player is called the second man, and the second man's job is to cover the net until they get the go-ahead to push up. But wait, what does covering the net really mean? It means rotating back post. Not sitting in the middle of the net, not camping on the back wall, rotating back post. Allow me to explain. For those of you who don't know, the back post is the post opposite the side of the ball. So if the ball's on the right side of the field, you should be rotating around the left until you get to the back post. And if the ball's on the left side of the field, you should be rotating around the right to get to back post. And just to be clear, rotating back post does not always mean making a wide loop around and picking up corner boost. It also doesn't mean shooting up the middle and doing a donut last second. It means picking a route that allows you to get to your destination quickly while being as efficient with your boost as possible. If you've heard what I'm talking about before, then you probably understand the concept of boost lanes, but that's a topic for another video. For the sake of this one, think get back post quickly and efficiently. Now you might be asking, why rotate back post? Why not front? Well, remember that little thing you learned about earlier called ranges? That's why. You see, rotating back post gives you complete coverage over the net in front of you. 
Put simply, it's much easier to save a ball in front of you than a ball shot behind you. But that's not all. Rotating back post is also important because if the ball does come your way, it allows you to clear the ball as you drive forward with your car. Take a look at this. I was coaching a champ one rated player earlier this week, and I want you to pay attention to how he rotates back post. It's almost perfect except for one problem. He pushes up just slightly too far. What happens because of that is he loses one of the most important aspects of rotating back post, the ability to clear the ball going with your car. So when the ball comes his way, he sends it right back up and the teammate gets an easy follow up on us. So what's the lesson? As the man rotating back post, your job is to literally park on the back post until you know for sure that it's safe to move up. And also, try to clear the ball with your car. You want to maintain possession, and the safest and easiest way to do that is to send the ball to your corner and try to follow it up from there. Anyways, with all this in mind, let's jump back to the scenario we were talking about earlier. Okay, now that we've covered the first two rules on defense, the final rule in defensive rotations is the last man. The last man is the furthest back, and their job is a little more situational. There are a few things the last man can do. The first thing is they can rotate back post if they think their team has control of the ball to get the second man to move forward and continue the rotation. Alternatively, if they think the challenge is going to be lost and the ball might be sent up their back wall, they can swoop up the back wall to try to get it clear because they are in the best position to read that ball. The last thing the third man can do is streak up. Streaking up is risky, and it's something I'll get into on the follow-up part 2 of this video, but streaking up allows for explosive counterattacks, and I'll talk more about that in the next one. For now though, the basic role of the third man is to rotate behind the back post and give the second man the go-ahead to push up. If you can get that down, you'll really start to understand why rotations are called rotations. Because as you move around, you're constantly changing roles. First, you're the man on the ball. Then, after you make your touch, you hustle back around and you're covering the last man roll. Then, you slowly push up, and it all continues until your team either breaks out with a clear or a counterattack. When defensive rotations are working well, it looks effortless. And when you get this right, not only do you make it nearly impossible for the opponents to score on you, but you set yourself up for some truly amazing counterattacks, like this one here. Now with all that being said, what I explained today are the basics of defensive rotations. Remember, Rocket League is a super situational game, so every rotation won't be this straightforward. However, if you can master this system, you're definitely going to see the results in your games. Alright guys, that is going to wrap things up for part 1 of my rotation guide. In part 2, I'll be covering offensive rotations, counterattacking, and how to really put the pressure on your opponents. So definitely stay tuned and check that video when it comes out as well. As always though, if this video was helpful to you, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like on this video and subscribed if you haven't already. If you have any questions or want to work with me personally through my private coaching program, then I'll have my Discord linked in the description below. But otherwise, that's all I've got for this video, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.